Dependency injection is a must to write clean, scalable and testable code. And in this video, I will walk you through what dependency injection is, why it's important and how you can implement it in your .NET projects. And as you can see here already, we have a .NET Web API and I have some interfaces here because this is well something that you might want to use when you're using dependency injection and in this tutorial we also use constructor injection because this is pretty much the most common type in a dotnet application in particular in a dotnet web api so now let's have a look here we've got an eye damage calculator because this is let's just say some kind of game where we want to display or see some enemies and for the enemies we want to calculate their damage that they're dealing uh, maybe some crazy idea, I know, but still I think this might be worth a like, don't you think? Maybe just hit that like button, thank you very much. So here in this interface, we have an int calculate method. So we calculate the damage of some enemy, and then in our enemy interface, we have an attack method. So we want to return actually a string, let's say just a text that then tells us how much damage a certain enemy has dealt, for instance. And then in the end, we also have a controller where we also want to use dependency injection. So how does this work? Let's just say we create another implementation of a certain interface or the first implementation, let's say. And here we have the org damage calculator. So this thing now should calculate the damage of an org. For that we implement the I damage calculator interface and with control and period we can implement that interface and then here just say return 50. All right now let's do the same for the goblin for instance. So here now new item goblin damage calculator like that. We again implement the I damage calculator. We implement the interface and here we return 20. So far, so good. So this helps us because later then when we want to inject an eye damage calculator, we can tell our application to use either the org damage calculator or the goblin damage calculator. But that's not everything. We have our eye enemy interface here. We could also call this some kind of service maybe because we later have to register this thing as a service. So to make use of the eye enemy interface, let's create our models. So now for instance, first the org and here again, we say I enemy. We want to implement the I enemy interface and here we see our attack method. Now the thing is, we want to use the specific calculator here, right? The damage calculator. So we could create an instance of that thing. So let's say we have our damage calculator here and this is now a new org damage calculator. So far, so good. So now we can say, damage is damage calculator, calculate damage. And in the end, we return a string where we say org deals damage, damage. All right, so this would work. But the thing is, as I told you in the beginning, we want to use dependency injection to make our app more scalable and testable and cleaner in the end. So this means here it would be a great thing if you could just say I want to use a damage calculator and I don't really want to know if it's now an org damage calculator or a goblin or elf or whatever it is. I just want to use the interface of that damage calculator and whoever wants to use the org then in this particular case also gives me or tells me what kind of damage calculator I need, right? And for that now we have dependency injection or constructor injection. So this means we can do the following. We have a private read-only field here of type I damage calculator. So the interface, and this is a damage calculator. And we can now again use control and period and we get this suggestion here, generate constructor. All right, so here now we have the constructor. Using constructor injection, this means when someone is creating an instance of the org, then we see that the damage calculator will be injected. So we have to tell then what damage calculator is used. And with that help now, we can remove this line here and just say, use this damage calculator. And in the end, we can do exactly this or pretty much the same for a goblin enemy, let's say. So here we create a new model, new item. This is now the goblin. And here, this is the I enemy. Implement the interface, right? But we copied the code, but now we have to be really careful because copy and paste mistakes are common. So here now 
we say goblin, all right? And now you see that the code is very similar, right? So we could also work with some kind of base class maybe, but either way, the idea here is that you learn, we can again use the eye damage calculator injected, but the result in the end should be something different, all right? So we are not done yet. There's a very important part missing, but before I show you that, I just wanted to remind you that with the nights getting longer and fall rolling in, I'm running a longer nights sale on my .NET Web Academy. It lasts only a couple more days, so make sure to check out the link in the video description or just go to .netwebacademy.com. All right, and now the important thing is registering your services. So this is done in the program CS. As you can see here, we already have a bunch of services, but now let's register register our own services. So here you write builder and then services and then add. Now it's getting interesting because we have a couple of options here, singleton, scoped and transient. The tooltip says adds a singleton service to or of the type specified. Then also here a scoped service when the tooltip is there. Yep, but this is not really helpful. We also have the transient option. Yeah, but let me explain you that the singleton, maybe this is the easiest one to understand. When your app starts, when it's running, then one instance of the service that is specified here will be created and it lives or is there throughout the whole lifetime of your application, all right? Now, the difference to the scoped one is, since this is a web API, we are making an HTTP request call to our API. And when for this request, we need an instance of a certain service, so we request a certain service then, for instance, our damage calculator, then only one instance will be created throughout the whole lifetime of this HTTP request. So not the app, but of this HTTP request. Now the big difference is here to transient then, maybe you see a pattern here that for a transient service, whenever a certain service, the damage calculator is requested, then for every request, we will get a new instance of that thing. All right, so you have to be careful here when you're thinking about state or memory allocation, what makes the most sense in your case. Most of the time, a scoped service works. So let's just say add scoped I uh, damage calculator. And here now we use our org damage calculator. So this means now that whenever we want to use a damage calculator, the org damage calculator is used. And this also works for the enemy because you will see in a second when we implement our controller, we want to inject an enemy. And in this case, we say builder services at scoped again, I enemy, and then we want to use the org implementation for that. All right, now real quick, let's go to the controller. And I already told you here, we can do pretty much the same thing. We want to inject in this case, an I enemy, call this thing enemy. We generate our constructor and we're done with that. Now let's just create a method. Yep, HTTP get was great. So now public I action results. And here now we just say attack for instance. And here we just say return okay. And then enemy attack all right now let's just save everything and i would say we test this so restart application it was already running i know there it is we've got our controller we try it out and what do we expect org deals 50 damage and that's it org deals 50 damage and the great thing now is that we can easily swap this so in our implementation we now say program cs for the registration we now instead of the goblin want to use uh, instead of the org we want to use the goblin let's save that and remember if we wanted to do that and we just used instances there so in every place where we created an instance of the org damage calculator, we now would have to change that and use the goblin damage calculator. But here now there's one place, the program CS, and you do not have to care or you do not have to know what happens in all the other places. So restart the application and here now, how much damage? Correct, 20, isn't that nice? Now I wanna show you still what happens now if we do not register the services in here app still runs, right? But maybe you see it here now, this is the error we get. And this is also common. I still run into that pitfall, let's say. So whenever you see something like unable to resolve service for type so and so, maybe you forgot to register your service and add the references like 
that. All right. Now, one of the biggest advantages of dependency injection is how it helps with unit testing. And if you want to know how to do that, then you might want to check out this video here on the screen.